In this video, we're going to derive the differential form of the conservation of mass equation. We're also going to introduce a control volume that we'll use subsequently to derive the differential conservation of momentum equation. Before we do that, I want to take a minute to review the idea of mass flows and volume flows, and how those apply to an arbitrary control volume. First, let me remind you that the mass flow rate is equal to the density times the cross-sectional area through which a fluid is flowing times the velocity with which that fluid is flowing. We give that the symbol m dot, and in the SI system, it's expressed in units of kilograms per second. Very often, we're interested in the volume flow rate. The volume flow rate is simply the cross-sectional area through which a flow is flowing times its velocity. It's given the symbol q, and it's expressed in units of meters cubed per second in the SI system. Now, I want to think about the volume flow rate passing through a surface. So let's think first of an arbitrary control volume. I can draw any type shape that I want here. And let's say we have some arbitrary velocity passing through that surface like this. Now I can define everywhere on that control volume a unit outward facing normal vector. Unit vector meaning it has a magnitude of 1 and normal meaning that it's everywhere perpendicular to that surface. If I want to look at the flow that's passing through the surface, I have to find the component of the velocity which is perpendicular to the surface. I think we can imagine this. If I had a velocity vector at this location that was moving in this direction, of course the fluid would be moving inside the volume, it wouldn't be passing through that surface. In order to pass through the surface, the velocity has to be perpendicular to the surface. Of course the velocity can be anything that it is, as shown by the vector v here, but the component that carries mass through the surface is that component which is perpendicular to the surface. And we can get that by using our, our outward facing normal vector. So if I zoom in on this region here, and let's say that surface looked something like this. Let's say our velocity vector was like this. And of course our normal vector at that location is perpendicular to the surface and has magnitude of one. If I take the dot product of my velocity vector v with that normal vector, I get the component of my velocity vector, which is parallel to the normal, or perpendicular to my surface. Let me just label these. There's my normal, and this component here is v dot n in the same direction as the outward normal vector. And so, if I want to evaluate then, what is the differential amount of mass passing through this chunk of area, which let's say it had an elemental area dA, then my differential mass flow going through that surface, dm dot, is going to be equal to the density times the velocity vector dotted with the outward facing normal times my differential area. If I were doing this instead in terms of volume flow, I could say the differential element of volume flow is equal to the same thing without the density. The velocity vector dotted with the normal vector multiplied by dA. And that's how I can evaluate the mass flow passing through any arbitrary control volume surface. Now, I'm interested in a Cartesian control volume. I'm going to define that for you here on this slide. A Cartesian control volume means that it's in our x, y, z coordinate system, and that planes of constant x are defined like this one, planes of constant y are defined like this one, and planes of constant z are defined like these front and back faces here. To make a closed control volume, I need six faces, and I'm going to locate my coordinate system at the center, so my x, y, z coordinate system is at the center of my volume with the direction shown here. I'm going to define a positive face as the face that I come across as I move in the x direction. In the positive direction, I'll come across what is the x plus face, and that x plus face will have a dimension of dy in this direction and dz in this direction, such that its area will be d z by dy. Similarly, if I went in the minus x direction, I would come across the x minus face. If I went in the positive y direction, I would get to the y plus face. Minus y direction, I get to the y minus face. And similarly in the z direction. And because I've located my coordinate system in the center, I know that the distance from my origin, or from the value at the center, to the face is going to be a distance dx over 2, or a distance dy over 2, or a distance of dz over 2, depending on which direction that I'm going. Of course, the volume of this control volume, v, 
is simply equal to dx times dy times dz. Now let's use this control volume to put together the differential conservation of mass equation. So we're going to look at that and we're going to do it in our control volume or Eulerian frame of reference. If we recall that equation was nothing other than if we're looking at a fixed mass, it is the rate of change of that mass with respect to time is zero. But we're going to look at that in the control volume with the Eulerian frame of reference and so we're going to think about it with reference to our control volume. And so how can we express that equation? Well, what can happen inside that control volume? We can have mass, the rate of mass increasing for some reason or changing inside that volume. We can have mass leaving that control volume, which is going to change the mass in the volume. Or we could have mass entering the control volume. So in words, there's the equation that we're working with. And let's start to put some expressions to this so we can come up with our equations. I'm going to look at a 2D slice of our, of our control volume, and I'm going to make some more definitions. We've already talked about the mass flow rate, so let's look at our x plus phase. Let's look at the mass flow. Let's assume that we have velocities going in this direction, so that our, we have a component of the velocity going in this direction. And we're going to make use of our normal vector definition that the velocity has got a u component in the i direction, plus a v component in the j direction, plus a w component in the k direction. Now that means that the u velocity component is perpendicular to this x plus face. That is the value of the velocity that's going to carry mass through that face. And so I don't need to take a dot product that's already done in that decomposition which is aligned with our coordinate system. And so the mass plus mass flow rate going through the x plus surface is going to be the density at that location times the velocity at that location times the area of that face, which we saw already was dy times dz. Similarly, I can look at the mass flow rate coming in at the bottom, and that's equal to the density at that location, the velocity at that location, and the area of that face, dx, dz. We can do that for all of the faces under control volume, and evaluate those terms that, were, that I just expressed in words. Now, we're going to need to evaluate the velocity at the faces. We know the value of our velocities at the center and our density for that matter. And we want to evaluate them on the faces so that we can calculate the mass flow rate going in or out of a face. To do that, we're going to express the velocity, or express our variables as Taylor series. As an example for the velocity, if I want to know the velocity at the x plus face, well, that would be my known velocity at the center, plus the rate of change of that velocity with respect to the direction I'm moving to the x plus face, du dx, times the distance to that face, dx over 2, plus hot C, higher order terms of a Taylor series expansion. And of course, we're going to approximate that. So we can say that's approximately equal to the beginning of this expression and neglecting the higher order terms. When we shrink this down to a point, that becomes exactly correct. And so let's express the mass flow going through each of our six faces in our Cartesian control volume. If we look at the x flow, the x face, that's this face here. The flow, the way we defined it, was going out. So I'll say the direction is out of the control volume. Our expression for the mass flow rate will be the mass flow rate going out the x plus face is going to be the value of rho u evaluated on this face. And we can use our Taylor series to express that as the value of rho u at the center plus the rate that rho u is changing as we move in the x direction through a distance dx over 2. And we have to multiply it by the area of that face, dx times dy. Similarly, on the x minus face, the flow now is coming into the control volume, but I'm moving backwards in the x direction, so I need the value of rho u that I know at the center, minus the rate that it's changing over a distance dx over 2 to get to the x minus face. Again, multiplied by the area of that face, which is the same. I can do the same thing in the y and z directions, going to the y plus face. I'm moving a positive dy over 2, and so I look at the value of rho v that carries mass through a y plus face, and its rate of change in the y direction as I move. At the y minus face, I've moved in the distance minus dy over 2 in order to get to that face, and so I see the minus appearing there. It's exactly similar in the z direction where we look at rates of change in the z direction and the velocity component w that carries mass through the z faces. So now let's look at our equation again. When we were looking at a fixed mass system, it was dm dt is equal to zero. 
would express this in words for our control volume formulation, the rate of increase of mass in the control volume plus the rate of mass leaving minus the rate of mass entering the control volume is equal to zero. And so let me first give an expression for the rate of increase of mass in the volume. I want the time rate of change, and I'm using partial derivatives now because of course we have spatial derivatives as well. But if we're looking at the fixed volume, it's simply the rate of what's changing in time inside that volume. And the mass is just the density times the volume, or the density times dx, dy, dz. And that will give me my first term. The second term is a little more interesting. Let's spend a little bit more time on it. Looking at our control volume again, if I want to look at the, the mass that's leaving this phase, I can apply that Taylor series solution and look at the terms that we just looked at. For all of these faces, I'm going to add the terms where the mass is leaving the CV. So that's my x plus face, and I see the rho u plus, how that changes as I move dx over 2 to that face. And then on the x minus face, the flow is entering the control volume. And so I have my negative of exactly the term we had there, the negative here coming from moving in the minus dx over 2 direction to get to that face. Exact same thing for the, the v components. To look at these mass fluxes, this mass flux coming in, this mass flow going out, and the same thing for the z. Well, now I can start to simplify these expressions. We'll notice that I have a rho u term here, and I have a minus rho u term here. Also, I have a plus rate of change of rho u times dx over 2, and I have a minus a negative rate of change of rho u times a dx over 2. These two terms are going to combine and the half will <clears throat> and add up to a full rate of change of rho u respect to x. So, as I said, when we simplify that, we have the rho u with a minus rho u, which those are going to cancel out. And similarly, in the y, the mass flux is in the y direction. And similarly, in the mass flows in the z direction. And then these two terms in each case are going to combine, are going to add. And notice that the area in the x direction, the, the x plus face and the x minus face is a dy dz, whereas the rate of change is in the x direction. So when these dx over 2's combine to a full dx, it's going to multiply a dy dz. In the case of the y faces, I have a dy for the direction that I'm moving and the rate of change of my variable, but the area is a dx dz. So again, I'm going to end up with a full dx dy dz. Let's look at that. So when I simplify that, now I've got the combined rate of mass leaving minus the rate of mass entering, and I simply have the rate of change of either rho u, rho v, or rho w with respect to x, y, or z times dx, dy, dz, or the volume in every case. So we can continue to simplify our equation. Here's the term that's related to the changes inside the volume, and I should have combined those like in the previous one. That rate of change of mass leaving the CV minus the rate of change entering the CV is expressed as thus. And of course, it's all equal to zero. And I should have changed the color for that. I can divide by the volume. I have the volume in every single term. So I can divide by dx, dy, dz. And I'm left with this expression here, which is the full form of my conservation of mass equation in differential form. Before we finish, we're going to look at some simplified forms of that and think about it just a little bit more. The first thing I'm going to do is I've derived this in a Cartesian coordinate system, but I can apply it actually to any coordinate system and I can express it very elegantly in vector notation. In vector notation, what I would see here is that this term here, that term that came about from the flows entering and exiting the control volumes, is the definition of this interesting operator here called the divergence. Here we have a rho u, a rho v, a rho w. Those are the components of the velocity vector, but they are the derivative of them is taken the u component with respect to x, the v component with respect to y, and the w component with respect to z. That defines this divergence operator, which I can show here. The divergence of any quantity is the derivative with respect to x plus the derivative with respect to y plus the derivative of z and it's dotted with the vector that it is operating on. In this case, that vector is the density times the velocity vector. 
So here's my expression in vector notation, and let's think about the physical meaning of this. Where did this come from? This term here expressed any rate of change of mass inside the volume. This term expressed the difference between what's going in and what's going out of my volume. If the divergence of this row V is itself equal to zero, that means that what was going in and what was going out is exactly equal to each other. There is no difference between the mass flow rates going in and going out. So this divergence operator comes up a whole bunch in our conservation equations because it expresses that difference between what's going in and out of a control volume. We'll see that with other variables as well. Now let's look at some simplified forms of this. If I have a steady form, steady just means the time derivative is zero, and so if it's steady, that term is zero, and I see that the divergence of the density times the velocity vector is equal to zero, or going back to my Cartesian notation, then I have the derivative of rho u with respect to x, the derivative of rho v with respect to y, and the derivative of rho w with respect to z is equal to zero. The next simplification I can make is if the density is constant, or the incompressible form, constant density. If the density is constant, then of course the time derivative of the density is zero because there's no change in the density at all. It's not going to change in time or space. And if the density is constant, I can pull it out of the divergence operator. Remember, the divergence operator is taking derivatives, so it must be a constant if I'm going to pull it out of there. And if I pull it out, then I can divide through by it and get rid of the density. And so I'll be left with the divergence of the velocity vector itself is equal to zero. And I can go back to the Cartesian notation and simply say that du dx plus dv dy plus dw dz is equal to zero. And that's our incompressible form of the conservation of mass equation. Let's summarize that. Here I have the three different forms that we've talked about in vector notation. Here I have them in Cartesian form. It's applied to our Cartesian control volume. And here I have the full form of the equation, which we would need if we had a time-dependent problem that also had a varying density. If the flow is not time-dependent, but the density could still be varying, then we would have to use this form here, where the density is still inside the divergence operator, or inside these derivative terms, which are a representation of the divergence operator. And finally, in the simplest case, and one that we use quite frequently in this course, is here, where it's incompressible. So incompressible, steady, and full. And so that's differential form of the conservation of mass equation, which we'll see some examples of in subsequent videos.